Tell me what is the problem with our bureaucracy? You don't know about your own local self-government. How will you know about the Panchayati Raj? In relation with the freedom of speech, why should government control media houses? Why don't policies work in our country? Aren't you too privileged to become a civil servant? May I come in, sir? Yes, come in. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good Please morning, be seated. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank you, sir. Please give a brief introduction about yourself. So, my name is Anirudh Yadav. I was born in Chandigarh in 1996. So, I have completed my schooling from Delhi. And subsequently, I went on to do my engineering in biochemical engineering and biotechnology from IIT Delhi. So, currently, I am serving in the Indian Information Service as an officer trainee. And so my hobbies include studying the prevention and causes of aging and also playing football and squash, sir. Anrudh, uh, when did you join Indian Information Service? So my year? training started in uh, January this year, sir. January this year. How are you finding your training? So it's very interesting, sir. It's um, so getting to learn a lot about the ministry, about uh, the different aspects of communication, sir. How do you collaborate with other ministries? Um, so, there is mostly the um, primary source of collaboration is through the PIB. There is an individual who is posted in every ministry uh, who is responsible for the release of the press releases and organizing press conferences, etc. That's the primary um, source of interaction, sir. Okay. You are undergoing training. Tell me what new technologies are uh, taught uh, to the probationers in that uh, training module? So, with respect to technologies, uh, so currently we had a session very recently on how artificial intelligence is being used to track fake news, sir. So, additionally, we are also, um, so there was a session on chat GPT, how we can use it to make press releases and how we can uh, detect different things that are made by AI using AI itself. So, AI is something that is um, there in the communication field. Which agency gave the presentation on uh, chat GPT and AI technologies? So, our, um, so, the faculty of the IIMC, the Indian Institute of Mass Communication, a faculty from there itself. Sir. Okay. And did you get any training in the crisis to deal with crisis communication also? Uh, so, we had an individual who spoke about his anecdotal experiences. But, um, so, he spoke about the topic was crisis communication, but he tried to give the message through anecdotes. Sir. Okay. You are a second uh, generation bureaucrat, isn't it? Sir. Your father was also a part of the bureaucracy. Tell me what is the problem with our uh, bureaucracy? So I feel, um, so very recently the Prime Minister in his address in, on the Civil Services Day also pointed out that the first, one of the primary problems is that, uh, that the bureaucrats are often uh, they are not cognizant of what is going on in the field, sir, because they are caught up in the rigmarole of work or for any other reason. So, second is an issue of attitude. So, oftentimes it is seen that a lot of uh, bureaucrats are ostensibly seen to be arrogant, perhaps because they are busy or because they can't take out time. Thus, uh, so the solution to this would be to have a people-centric approach, meet everyone who is coming, etc. And so, the third is the bane of corruption, sir, because corruption is something that has uh, pervaded many parts of the bureaucracy and has been seen in the past. What uh, about uh, the issues like indecision, risk aversion on the part of a bureaucrats? Absolutely, sir. So, I agree that there is, so because of the system of bureaucracy, or so it can also be due to legacy challenges, there is a lot of uh, risk aversion and decision making, sir. Why don't uh, policies work in our country? So, I believe that uh, India is such a big country and there are many nuances in a country like India. So, policy formulation itself requires large data sets of what is happening on the field. So, so I believe at the stage of formulation, there are issues with respect to data-led policy making. On the scale of implementation, sir, often we have seen that the second ARC also noted that there is a one-size-fits-all. So, India is a land of tremendous diversity, right from geographical, cultural, social, etc. And sir, I believe that there needs to be a little nuance, there needs to be a little wiggle room for the IAS, IPS and other officers on the field to ensure that implementation is, uh, it can be uh, catered to the specific audience. So, thirdly, I believe the regulation is a third front, that uh, regulatory bodies for implement, uh, for seeing how the policy is being implemented and additionally having a feedback mechanism to improve policy. Uh, so, these are the three challenges. Okay. The uh, emphasis of the government is to switch over from 
रूल बेस्ड डिसीजन मेकिंग टू रोल बेस्ड डिसीजन मेकिंग विद द लिटिल एक्सपीरियंस व्हिच यू हैव हैड इन द ब्यूरोक्रेसी एंड द लॉन्ग एक्सपीरियंस व्हिच योर फादर हैड इन द ब्यूरोक्रेसी डू यू थिंक इट इज अ इंप्लीमेंटेबल एंड इट इज अ डूएबल प्रोपोजिशन सो आई फील दैट द फैक्ट दैट द ब्यूरोक्रेसी इज करेंटली कॉल्ड रूल बेस्ड इज बिकॉज़ देयर इज अ प्लेथोरा ऑफ रूल्स दैट कंस्ट्रेंट ब्यूरोक्रेट्स फ्रॉम टेकिंग डिसीजंस सो टू मूव टू द ऑब्जेक्टिव्स और आई बिलीव इज समथिंग टू मूव टू अ रोल बेस्ड इज समथिंग दैट is currently utopian sir because rules are what not only restrict bureaucrats but also ensure that there is less corruption there is more accountability etc so as an example so there are rules as to how much money can be spent on a official dinner or an official lunch so this requires a lot of paperwork to be filled out so the tada forms for instance that one fills are very long and take a lot of time however sir this is only to ensure accountability and sir to move to a role based system So either we need to use technology to prefill these forms or to ensure that there is a digital way of ensuring accountability. So I believe that is the way forward to move to a role-based. Presently, the bureaucracy is basically the principles or the basic tenets of bureaucracy is based on mistrust. Indeed, sir. Don't you think that we should, this high time the country should switch over from or uh, move from this idea of mistrust to the idea of trust? Uh, sir i believe that the fact that the bureaucracy is essentially based on mistrust uh, sir is because of the fact like um, in our shastra mr sir cotelio noted that corruption in a place like a bureaucracy is like a fish drinking water so it has to be on mistrust because so there is the public funds this is the tax payers money that is being used and so there must be a system of checks and balances there must be a system of ensuring accountability of individuals so giving um, so ensuring that there is a lot of trust trust would certainly do good for efficiency however sir it will be very difficult to find out the trouble makers or the notorious elements in the bureaucracy sir okay thank you anirudh thank you sir hello anirudh good afternoon sir anirudh uh, i can see that uh, you just mentioned you 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 are from delhi sir your father is ips officer sir you stay in chanakya puri studied from sanskrit school sir and you too privileged to become a civil servant i mean it's good you can be ias officer fine maybe corporate law or service officer but these privileges you have will be a detrimental for your good work in services like ias isn't it iit so i feel so my primary motivation for joining the services was indeed to give back to the country that has given me so much so like you mentioned sir i have lived in a government house all my life so my college education was government funded the school i went to was built on government land that was subsidized my fees were subsidized because of the same fact so i owe a huge debt so everything i am today is because of the government and sir uh, so all the privilege that privileges that you also mentioned are because of the government itself and sir i owe my life to the government in that sense and i believe working in the civil services is a way of repaying that debt sir so that's that's only about the uh, the internal motivation you're talking about my concern is that because of these privileges sir your personality uh, in fact lacks certain things for example that you might your father might already have i mean he he might be com- not be coming from as privileged background as uh, you're coming from so if you compare your background with his background and then you'll realize that isn't uh, it that you have uh, imbibed certain values which are detrimental to become good ias or ips ias is fine sir it is my understanding that sir privilege is not the primary factor that drives one one's traits or um, so the different virtues that a person imbibes so it is a factor of so your internal thinking the way you have been brought up by your parents the challenges that you have faced in your life and so while privilege a thing like privilege can certainly ensure that living in a rural area perhaps might be tough or so living um, in a far flung area might be tough so but my perspective is that that is a challenge i want to overcome so i want to uh, give back to the country and i want to ensure that by go- going there i can understand the true nature of india of which i have only read about in books you coming from chanakya puri sir what is the local self government structure there uh, sir it, the local self government so it's a municipal council sir the ndmc new delhi municipal council what are the elected uh, elected uh, components in ndmc so there is uh, a mayor in M- ndmc sir and so there is uh, there is a mayor in ndmc so there is an elected ma- ma- mayor in ndmc how many wards are there in ndmc where elections took take place uh, sorry sir how many wards are there in ndmc where elections take place sir i'm not sure sir how many wards have you ever voted in ndmc election uh, no sir 
then why are you saying there are elected component in NDMC? Because I'm for the first time I'm hearing somebody saying NDMC has elected components. I apologize, sir. There's a mayor in M MCD, sir, not in NDMC. I apologize. Sir. So that you don't know about your own local self government. How will you know about the Panchayati Raj? So I'm not aware of uh, the structure of the NDMC. Sir. Anyways, you're currently sitting IAS officer, provisioner. Indeed, sir. I think we can discuss right to information with you. What is the nodal department for right to right to information? RTI. Uh, so the nodal department. So there's an info information officer that is in every department, and so that, that is, is true. The, but what is the nodal department in the ministry? Which ministry? So it's the Central Information Commission, sir. Comes under which ministry? Who the the grants for the uh, Central Information Commissioner will be from which department? So I believe it is under the so the Ministry of a Personnel, sir. So it's DOPT. Why not uh, Information Ministry? I mean, there is a min Ministry of Information already. You are an officer there. Indeed. Sir. Then RTI should be under you. Why DOPT? Sir, I believe that the reason for this is that the Right to Information Act, so number one, is to ensure that information can be gathered from all the ministries. And sir, it is a, it is more of, an, of a human resources challenge rather than an information challenge. So because ensuring that the human resources of all ministries have the department so ensuring that the guidelines under section 4 of proactively giving out the uh, information. But none of them actually know what information is. You guys are trained uh, to understand what information is, what information is valuable, what information is to be disseminated. And you are kept out of it, out of it. Why? So the primary mandate of the information and broadcasting ministry is, so in the three departments, is to take out the information of the government and take it to the public, sir. So with and regard that's what to RTI envisages. Indeed, sir. Then? So with respect to the RTI, there needs to so there needs to be a central ministry to ensure that all the other ministries are doing their work, and additionally, so in the in the mandate of the RTI, for instance, in section four, section eight, etc., there needs to be a supervisory mechanism. So the information and broadcasting ministry is primarily only focused on ensuring that information of the central government goes out, such as schemes, etc. Recently, a former governor actually made a claim in the uh, interview in an interview that uh, the list of guests, visitors to the President of India are is vetted by PMO, right? If I want to find out this through RTI, will this information be supplied to me? Who will supply this? Or it is against the national interest and cannot be given? What's your take as an IIS officer? Sir, I believe that it depends on whether the information is being, um, if the information being seeked is before or after the event has taken place. So if it is before, perhaps they will not release the information till after the event is complete. And so I believe that the info, uh, RTI would be, have to be filed with the PMO, which is making the decision. Anirudh, you've taken anthropology as your option. And you're, you, you mentioned that you uh, is working or you like to work on the causes of aging thing. Let's talk about disease. Is aging uh, a disease, technically speaking? So very recently, uh, so the World Health Organization has indeed classified aging as a disease. And so this is as of 2017. If it is a disease, what kind of disease it is? So currently it is understood to be a lifestyle disease. Sir. Lifestyle disease. Tell me, uh, since you have studied anthropology, what is the role of diseases in evolution of humankind? So it is said that diseases have actually made humans what they are. So about 11% of our DNA comes from the DNA of viruses and bacteria. So it is seen that diseases are the primary driver of what is called survival of the fittest. In other, in other words, what you are saying that uh, uh, the treatments, the medical science is disruption to evolution. Is it? Uh, so speaking from a biological sense, yes sir. It's disruption to. So why do you want to prevent aging then? Why do you want to disrupt evolution? So with regard to prevention of uh, aging, so the focus is on ensuring that the latter years of one's life are healthy. And so because uh, in the latter years, one faces diseases such as cancer, etc. So not only are there a psychological burden on the family, but additionally, they also are a huge financial stress, especially um, to large parts of the Indian population. And so the reason for healthy aging is to ensure a healthy latter part of your life, where one can ensure that they are happy, enjoy their retired life. But if you look uh, at what is happening in France, it understand that people are, want to stop aging so that they uh, can push human beings to work even more. Unfair, isn't it? Indeed, sir. So I believe that if, even if we look at history, so aging has always, we are always in a fight against aging. 
So the life expectancy in 1900 was 40 globally and it was about 27 in India. So currently it is at, it is at about 72.5 and so because it happened in a span of 100 years and because we live through it, we don't look at it as prevention of aging. So the entire field of medical science is indeed uh, is indeed doing the same thing of prevent, preventing aging in the long run. Sir. Anyways, thank you. So. Hi, I'm Nurid. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. If we uh, just continue with the sir's uh, argument with you, if you prevent aging and kind of becoming the most populous country in the world, how would matlab, we would be like uh, anything? Nobody would be after us. Matlab. There would be huge gap. India would be doing the same number of people would be there population wise, I would say. Sir. Is it okay or people should die on, as per their age or why should we intervene basically? So I believe the idea is to ensure that when an individual grows old, so for instance, there are a lot of individuals who at the age of 60, through their vast experience in their life, have learned so much. So for instance, if we compare someone like Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala and Mr. Warren Buffett, so the only difference is that Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala died early. Mr. Warren Buffett made a majority of his wealth after the age of 80, sir. It means we are focusing or we have to focus for on few individuals they have to live long who have that much, who have gained that much of knowledge or in their particular field like Rakesh Junjunwala or per se you can say Michael Jackson or somebody who is very famous, renowned person in so their I, field. So huh? this is just an anecdote, sir. So for instance, Mr. C. R. Rao, after retiring at the age of 60. Malu, you, are, you are naming the people who know you or who, matlab, the people are known by all over India, matlab, pan India. What about the common people? Why not we work for the laborers or for the people who are very, matlab, who are not privileged, I would say. Absolutely, sir. Sir, I believe that any uh, therapy to prevent and prevent the causes of aging will benefit, um, so the lower socioeconomic strata the most. So this is because, sir, a majority of their expenses are out-of-pocket expenses and are associated with the issues of aging, such as cancer, such as high blood pressure, such as heart issues. So it is estimated that on average, a family spends more than 60% of its saving. So on average... Is it good for a country like India? Sir, to spend this much on uh, sir, healthcare, sir? Healthcare and then population-wise, India is the top country. Indeed, sir. So, it, so that is the goal of the those people reason. would be burden on all resources. So I believe that population is is um, is potential for a country, sir. So okay. as long as we let's, can let's move on to other subject. Who was Anirudh in Hindu mythology? Uh, sir, Anirudh was the grandson of Lord Krishna, sir, as written in the Bhagavad Puran, sir. Bhagavad Puran. And uh, Lord Krishna, if we talk about how many chapters are there in Srimad Bhagavad Gita? Uh, sir, I'm not aware of the number of chapters. Why we talk about uh, Ram Rajya, we used to talk about. Sir. What is the concept of Ram Rajya? So I believe that the idea of Ram Rajya, so for instance, as understood by uh, Gandhiji, he said that Ram Rajya is Gram Rajya. We need to ensure that the villages are the center of development. We need to ensure that... Could you compare with your idea of uh, prevention of aging, to prevent aging and then Ram Rajya? Why we talk about Ram Rajya, not Krishna Rajya? Uh, sir, I am not aware. Sir. Not aware. Okay, why uh, means uh, it is generally said that media is biased, what does it mean? So it is generally seen uh, that the media, all media houses tend to have a specific bias with, uh, for instance, sir, in the in a country like the United States, there is a very clear division with channels such as the And Fox there is News. no bias in the mindset of a Babu who is sitting in the government, working for the government. Why a country, a democratic country, uh, if I would say as per kind of Indian democracy, okay, in a democratic system, why we should control the opinion, ideas and a number of things and that is not in relation with the freedom of speech. Why should government control media houses? Sir, I believe that media houses should not be controlled, only regulated. So to this extent, we have seen that even the regulation taken out by the government such as the Press Councils Act. So, uh, most of these are self-regulatory bodies with individuals from within the press houses regulating the information. So, only very recently in the IT rules. Uh, I'm just asking in a democratic country, why uh, these uh, controls or I would say regulations should be there? 
Sir, I believe that the only uh, restriction through regulation on the media should be on the basis of Article 19.2, which uh, gives the reasonable restrictions of freedom in speech, of speech and expression, sir. So, such as public order, incitement of violence, etc. Okay. What are the differences between and similarities between print and uh, digital media? So, both are sources of information. Um, so, we see that the print media is now shifting to digital media. All the newspapers are slowly but surely moving. So, we are seeing that the entire print industry, a lot of large, um, so centuries old newspapers such as the New York Times, etc., are under tremendous pressure because they're not being, they're not viable anymore because uh, in the print media space and are moving to digital media. So, I believe there is more of a transition from print to digital, sir. Should not we stop this kind of print media because everybody is moving towards digital media and that would be also uh, for the benefit of environment? Sir, I believe that print media is the primary source of information, especially in rural areas. So, a lot of individuals are not, uh, they don't have access to, sir, a mobile phone or a mobile tower or an iPad. So, in print media, a lot of individuals are illiterate and it is one individual in the village who is reading out the news to everyone. That was the case in 70s and 80s. Nowadays, everybody has his mobile phone and a smartphone, I would say. You are talking about 70s, 80s, isn't it? Sir, I have read articles where even today during COVID, uh, sir, I read, read an article where all the COVID news was read out in a village in Maharashtra by one individual uh, who was literate over there. This was a tribal community, sir. Okay, madam. Anirudh, I am really fascinated by your, uh, you know, work which you are doing, causes and prevention of aging. Ma'am. Right. A bit of more elaboration I would like to from you. First, what kind of method you are actually using for studying such kind of researches? So, what is the research method you have been used? Ma'am, the primary uh, method of research that is used in the laboratories is a double-blind, placebo-controlled uh, method wherein different supplements, different exercises, different lifestyle changes, individuals okay. with certain habits are put in one control group and one uh, active group and the efficacies of different systems is tested. Okay, so it's a controlled experiment, if I would say. Yeah. Okay. Tell me, Anirudh, that uh, you have been studying the causes of aging. Yeah. You know, what are the causes? The diseases are actually leading to aging, right? As I could make out from the discussion you have been doing. Now, I believe that diseases are a little downstream of the core cause of aging. Yeah. Okay. So tell me that uh, is pregnancy a kind of disease also? No, ma'am, I do not believe that uh, pregnancy. But it brings a lot of changes in the body. Indeed, ma'am. So, how can it be, you know, dealt with? Ma'am, for instance, we see a lot of uh, natural occurrences in the body, such as puberty in adolescents, which bring a lot of changes in the body. Ma'am, all of these, a lot of these changes are associated with growth and development. Ma'am, the, and even though biologically we might age, ma'am, the problem with aging is not the chronological age, but the fact that there are negative uh, diseases and lack of efficiency in the body associated with the process. So, to that extent, I don't believe that uh, pregnancy or adolescent puberty is aging, uh, okay. is a disease. Now. <laughs> okay. Tell me, Anuridh, that uh, recently, you know, global, global uh, Buddhist summit actually took place, right? So, what is the relevance of this uh, Buddhist summit, summit in India? Um, uh, firstly, India is the birthplace of Buddhism. Um, secondly, in the international sphere, we see that uh, India, while it cannot compete with China in the hard power sense, soft power plays a crucial role. China being a primarily Buddhist country and additionally uh, India, if it can become the flag bearer of Buddhism, it can certainly gather a lot of support from a lot of neighboring Buddhist countries such as Myanmar, such as Sri Lanka, such as countries in Southeast Asia. Man. Okay, so it's politically driven. Otherwise, no relevance of Buddhism in India. Ma'am, India has a large Buddhist population and ma'am, culturally India was, uh, like I had mentioned, the birthplace of Buddhism. Okay, so what are the four teachings of Buddha? Uh, Ma'am, the four tenets given by Buddha were, uh, the first was uh, non-violence. Ma'am, the second was ensuring, controlling the senses through meditation. Ma'am, these are the only two I can remember right now. Okay, no issue. You are from Delhi, right? Ma'am. So, tell me that how can, uh, you know, one protect a dead river like Yamuna? I consider it a dead river, you know, while I am coming here on my way, the stinking, uh, you know, that smell actually suffocates me. So it's almost, it's not a river now, it's a drain. No. Right. So how can this uh, dead river be revived? And as a student of anthropology, what is the cultural relevance of river? 
ma'am to revive a river such as the yamuna in the current state that it is ma'am a four step process can be used a four pronged approach ma'am the first being monitoring of all the industrial effluents that are released into the yamuna ma'am the second being ensuring that there is flood plain management ma'am the flood plains are often called the a vital part of the health of the river ensuring that these areas are green construction doesn't happen on these areas etc and the third is bio remediation of the river itself using uh, natural causes ma'am for instance there are plants there are a lot of microorganisms that can be used to clean up the river itself ma'am through a process which is called bio mining ma'am fourthly ma'am the use of sewage treatment plants and wastewater treatment plants that is pumping the river of the yamuna into these plants where it is cleaned and put further ma'am the fifth would be to i mean extra point would be just to ensure that the natural flow of the river if it is maintained as we saw in the covid crisis the nature has a remarkable tendency to heal itself okay so what is the sociological relevance of uh, river of any river socio cultural relevance ma'am water is something that is central to society it is said the thousands have lived without love but not one without water ma'am rivers have traditionally been one of the foremost sources of water individuals have always uh, large civilizations have always been made on the banks of rivers what is the cultural relevance ma'am a lot of uh, for instance ma'am in the yamuna we see that a lot of the rites associated with death etc uh, ma'am the la- um, the last remains are often flown into the river and there are a lot of um, pujas etc that happen on the banks of the river ma'am often it is said in india to cleanse your sins you need to take a dip in the ganga cleanse yourself and uh, mm-hmm. make the river polluted indeed ma'am so you agree uh, so there is no cultural relevance ma'am the cultural relevance is the fact that our very being our understanding of the universe around us our understanding of okay. the world okay do we have any policy over this do we have any robust policy ma'am specifically for rivers yes. we have the ganga action plan ma'am for the, uh, for the yamuna also there was a uh, yamuna board that was created specifically for the purpose of cleaning it ma'am okay thank you anirudh thank you ma'am anirudh sir in your dev you have mentioned that playing football is one of your hobbies right sir so did you watch the uh, last fifa world cup indeed sir okay right see in uh, these international events we often hear that uh, you know they the the body the officials of these bodies are actually you know uh, requested to may, make a statement of on international contentious issues for example it was russian ukraine issue at that uh, moment of time similarly in the past there was tibetan crisis you know tibetan issue in olympics so do you find it okay or you know you would like to have more independent space for international sports bodies sir i believe sports is something that brings the world together it crosses national boundaries and has the unique power of uh, uniting people so be it a football match or be it uh, athletics in the olympics and to that degree sir i believe that sports so what is often called sports washing that sports should not be used as an excuse by a country or by any international organization or to bring up a certain political issue or to um, so cleanse um, so things that have happened in the past in that particular country sir okay see where do you see indian football today do you think that you know in certain uh, time you know down the line you know india will be able to participate in fifa world cup sir i certainly hope so but i think that uh, day is about at least 12 to 16 years away sir so what would you like to do uh, sir i believe that firstly sir we need to scout the talent because there's a lot of talent but uh, harnessing it and identifying it early is the key challenge so secondly we see that in countries like europe and brazil there is a certain craze of football the same way we have a craze of cricket which uh, makes individuals drive forward in football so thirdly is the facilities the infrastructure so ensuring that there are coaches so in the western world we have dietists nutritionists geneticists often working with football teams and so ensuring that there is a little more funding towards the professional aspect of the same and so fourthly there would be the coaching industry so india has not uh, does not have any preeminent coaches in football and so coaching it is said can create an average player into an extraordinary player so these four steps i believe would okay see in this month india's external affairs minister will be on a visit to uh, latin america and caribbean you know countries right so what i uh, know what do these countries you know hold uh, for india in terms of you know uh, many things uh, so the latin american countries and the caribbean countries uh, hold immense significance to india especially in the current scenario 
So firstly, because we have seen that a lot of um, so technologies, especially related to lithium, so have been will be transferred. There are talks going on with Bolivia. So secondly, we see that um, so countries such as Brazil are part of major international organizations and ensuring um, ensuring that we have relations with all South American countries can certainly increase our uh, so the fact that India needs more votes often in United Nations that is there, sir. So thirdly, the diaspora. Of India is not too much in South America, so that is not a reason for concern, sir. And so, fourthly, I believe the fact that uh, so South America shares a border with the Pacific Ocean, and with the Pacific Ocean now being called the Indo-Pacific and becoming into and uh, coming into increased relevance, so that is also a factor that needs to be considered. Thank you, Anurudh. What is the status of uh, Data Protection Bill and uh, Digital India Bill? So the data protection bill is currently, sir, uh, it has been revised and will be brought in during the monsoon session, sir. And digital India bill? Sir, I am not aware of the status of the digital You are not aware of that. You have had the exposure uh, to MIT also, isn't it? So my visa application was cancelled, sir. You didn't go to? So I couldn't go to MIT, but I was part of the team I was supposed to go. So, okay. I okay. attended it virtually, sir. Okay. And you, did you go to Vienna or you didn't go to Vienna also? That was a three month long internship, sir. So I had gone there. You had gone there. So you must have had some exposure of uh, academics in uh, the European countries. In the new education policy, government is trying to attract foreign universities to, to set up uh, campuses in our country. In your opinion, is it a pragmatic proposition? Will uh, reputed universities uh, from the world over will come and set up uh, campuses in India? Indeed, sir. So I do believe that it is a valuable proposition. So, firstly, because we see that there are a lot of individuals going from India abroad in search of these universities and foreign degrees. So, this money can not only stay in India, but the brain drain that is happening can stay in India. So secondly, I believe that India right now, so only today there was an article saying the number of people who give GRE in India and USA is the same. That is India's concern. Do you think that foreign universities will be attracted and it will be financially and economically a viable proposition for them to set up uh, campuses in our country? Certainly, sir. So I believe that in India, so because there are so many people graduating every year in search of quality education. So these, uh, a lot of these institutes that come in, will come in with a tag of a foreign university that is often in demand in a country like India and students who are paying upwards, so there are students paying upwards of 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs for engineering seats. Sir, uh, at something, at a price point such as this in India, they will certainly be financially viable as well, sir. One last question before we let you go. Can you prescribe a pre uh, prescription to me by which by, uh, I can delay my aging? Absolutely, sir. Tell me what is the prescription? Sir, the first and foremost would be to sleep 8 hours a day. So, because that is the uh, number one causal region for stress, etc. that exacerbates everything else. So, second would be exercise. So, ensuring that 220 minutes of exercise done is something that should everyone should do. So, third is the use of what we call Ayurvedic um, supplements, etc. So, eating Chavan Prash daily is the most beneficial thing one can do for their immunity. And ensuring that the self-healing system works well. Sir, having haldi regularly is something that is um, especially good for everyone. So, for instance, if you have a clove of garlic every day, so you can certainly ensure that your heart, he heart health remains fine. So, there, there are a lot of other biohacks as well. So, there is something called a soleus push-up, which everyone can do just while sitting. So, this ensures that the LDL, the bad cholesterol in our body, reduces by about 25% only if we do this about 1-2 to two hours a day. And this is as simple as just raising your... Um, so, calf uh, every about 10 seconds if you're sitting for two hours. Thanks a lot for your <laughs> valuable suggestion, Anurat. <laughs> nice talking to you. Your interview is over. You may go now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Sit down, Anurat. Thank you, sir. Anurat, this is your second or third? This is my third interview. Sir. Third interview. Uh, marks, uh, first interview marks? So, I got 190 in the first one. 190. Second interview marks? So, 173. 170. And with your capable of getting anything between 170 to 200, no doubt about it. Excellent communication skill. Your ideas are very clear, confident, no issues with that. Now, your interview will be 
conducted with a different ethos now you are already a member of uh, indian civil service on your occasions you are aspiring to become a member this year you will be going as a member of uh, indian civil service so a lot of questions you should expect about uh, the role of services in the making of our country that is very important what are the positive sides what are the negative uh, uh, sides and all that and you must be aware of all, all that as because your father also happened to be in the bureaucracy and particularly in the department of police and all that so negative perception about the police the police reforms what are your suggestions in the community policing and all that the issues faced by uh, cause the cutting edge uh, level of uh, constabulary and all that so those funding issues and all that so you should expect questions regarding that now you are a member of uh, indian information service so read thoroughly about uh, your service what exactly because there won't be a very direct question it will only be a situational question and a, a problem posed before you what is the need of uh, indian information system in the modern age so there, there you have to justify the need and what way it uh, regulates it can't con be controlling how how does it regulate and all that in that case uh, in that respect only uh, the right to information act and all that it comes handy who controls uh, print media which agency controls uh, digital media ott platform and all that expect questions uh, on all that rti read it thoroughly this is very important because i was not expecting you to get confused on the issue of rti the dopt is the nodal ministry for that one nodal department for that so as a civil servant you should not be found wanting on such issues and all that and then you are a product of uh, iit issues with regard to iit issues with regard to higher education problems in the iit per se suicides uh, dropout rates and all that those issues are also relevant mushrooming growth of uh, iits so, uh, so you may be asked to compare the uh, new upcoming iits with uh, old ones yeah. yeah so that is another why other private institutions can't come up to the level of iits and all that so larger issue of our indian education system and all that so you are a boy from delhi delhi you should prepare thoroughly from all angles so because you should expect be it a uh, issue of pollution be it issue of landfills be it issue of uh, transport problems and uh, so on so forth this is a long long list isn't it and you have uh, studied from a school uh, called sanskriti i believe so issue surrounding areas what are the problems you have seen and all that so that will may bring you to the question of uh, slum dwelling and all that that is also an important area and uh, the bills which are uh, in the offing the details of those bills related to your ministry that that, that is very important for you and uh, try to get intent of the question you one question you heard on the wrong side the question was asked about ndmc and you spoke about mcd then later on you realized that you are giving so don't ensure that such occasions don't arise okay otherwise you are a wonderful candidate and you have proved your metal twice so nothing much to add to what uh, we have told you so work thoroughly on your uh, departments working on the bureaucracy how bureaucracy ha has uh, contributed so far how it should contribute in the future what changes do you recommend in the way our bureaucracy works and all that your views on lateral entry and so on so forth all those issues are there but you are a wonderful candidate and if you have really done well in your uh, mains examination god willing will be in the list of indian administrative service officers okay thank you sir all the best thank you sir